Changing to help you move through the challenges of life? Then join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. Number 12. Father, it's in Jesus' name that we thank you for this glorious morning. Father, you are good. And you're good all the time. Father, we bless you that you have allowed us to see another experience of a Sunday morning. Thank you, God, that you have held back the cloud, the rain, and you've allowed us to worship under this open heaven. Thank you, God, that you will release rain of your spirit. Even now, God, as we share your word, I pray that, God, somebody is edified today. I thank you even now that you are glorified. And, Father, thank you even now that you've moved me out of the way, ushering your presence and your power for teaching. And, Father, I praise you that as I decrease, you increase in me. Bless those who are here on the parking lot and bless those who are viewing by stream. Do something, God even in their life right now. And we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen, amen, amen. Let's go to Romans chapter number 12, verse number 1. Very familiar passage. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And here it is. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Is that the essence of what your Bible says? If so, we're together this morning. I want to talk about making my renewed presentation. Making my, I want to make it personal. Somebody touch yourself and say, I'm making my renewed presentation. Amen. Thank God. Listen, this morning as I stand today I thought about the fact that because when we look around everything is in flux uh, nothing is the same everything is varying uh, this morning and, and and yet even though we see all of of the of the chaos and and all the things that are happening in the earth that are no longer the norm one thing that we must do is to continue our spiritual discipline in the things of God because it's very easy right now in this season uh, to catch a streaming live service and and then turn back over and and uh, forget all about everything that you just heard, everything uh, that you saw, and, and, and just move about life as if nothing spiritual is happening. We got we to gotta make sure then that uh, we don't allow all of the distractions uh, uh, to get in our way right now. It's, it's easy to miss right now walking closely uh, to the Lord and as we did when we were uh, gathering more uh, in um, the the worship centers and and now we've got more streaming and outdoor worship and things are a little uh, different and and there was more of it at least some uh, some sort of time that we could be together and have some checks and balances and and some accounts 
accountability, uh, but now things have changed. And I, I hear the Spirit saying that a whole lot of people uh, have begun to, to walk away and, and not be as close to me as uh, you used to. And the Spirit says you need to go and remind them that uh, they need to, to make a renewed presentation to me. In other words, this morning, if the church uh, is going to be who God has called uh, us to be, the church's ability to move to new levels is dependent uh, and contingent upon uh, the members making a renewed presentation. And yeah, it comes as a result of our worship and our relationship with God. You got to understand when you talk about worship, uh, we're talking about the worship. We we worship that which is worthy. Revelation four and eleven said, "You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power." How many of you know that only God is worthy of our worship? Now understand then that what we worship. Uh, is the best indicator of what is really valuable to us. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. When we consider worship, uh, it involves attitude, it, it involves actions, and, and worship uh, is not just an unexpressed feeling, nor empty formality. It is intelligent. It ought to reach deep uh, within and is motivated by love and ought to lead to obedient actions that give God glory. The overall thought is that worship uh, is the believer's response of all that uh, he is uh, in his mind, in his emotions, in your will, in your body, to all that God is and says and does. Worship is a serious matter. When we gather to worship, uh, we are really gathering to witness. What do you mean, preacher? Our witness is in three parts. Uh, we, uh, we witness to the Lord. That's the celebration. And then we witness to one another. That's the edification where uh, we are building up the body. And, and, and then there is uh, the witness to the world. That's the proclamation when we go out and carry the word uh, to people outside of the ranks of the church. Uh, Warren Wiresby says once that of the three, uh, the most important is our witness to the Lord. It is not right then. Uh, if it's not right, if your witness to the Lord is not right, we will not be able to edify one another or evangelize the lost. Can I get some help? Now, in other words today, we, we don't come to church to prepare to worship uh, because worship ought to be the constant attitude and the activity of the believer. Yeah, we ought to, uh, we ought to have worshiped God uh, before we get uh, to these holy grounds. We, we should have worshiped God early this morning. How many of you worshiped him early this morning when, uh, when your eyes opened up, when, uh, when you realize I can move my hand, I don't need to wait till I get here with the other believers. I begin to magnify his, Lord and his name right there. I begin to worship him right there. Is there anybody besides me? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, my grandmama used to say, I woke up this morning and my mind was stayed on Jesus. We, we, we just come to church to worship publicly and corporately together. Now, we ought to bring with us uh, what we have been doing all week long. Now, uh, what does God do as we worship? For he knows all things, so our worship does not surprise him. He, he owns all things, so our gifts don't enrich him. He is perfect in all things, so our fellowship with him cannot improve him. Uh, but when we worship, when we witness to God, uh, God begins to delight in our worship. He, he takes a seat in the worship. Isn't that right? Uh, yeah, he, he takes delight in his people. And then he responds to their worship and their obedience. 
Now, who God is does not change because of our worship or our refusal to worship. For God is still and will always be God. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Can I get a witness? Now, in the text this morning that I read into your hearing, here in Romans chapter number 12, uh, Paul is bringing together our opportunity to witness to God through worship uh, that is a result of obedience and our love for God. Uh, Paul has to this point uh, dealt with some strong issues in the book of Romans. When you go back and read in the first 11 chapters, he has dealt with redemption and he's dealt with faith and doctrine. He's dealt uh, with wrath and sovereignty. He has dealt with sanctification and, and justification. He, uh, he has dealt with the issues of the challenges of sin and now he begins begins to wrap it up as uh, to who we are and who we are to be and, and what our response is to God. And so he comes to chapter number 12 uh, to begin to wrap up uh, the discourse. And he says, he says, therefore, he said, I beseech you, therefore, uh, brethren, by the mercies of God, uh, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He, he says, I beseech you. He, he comes and he says that, and that I urge you by the mercies. I, I urge you by the mercies of God. Now, he is dealing with all those who are of the household of faith. Uh, he says, brethren, he, uh, he's talking about uh, each one of us. And, and he says, I beseech you, I come before you, and I urge you, brethren, Yes, that uh, by the mercies of God. Somebody say the mercies of God. Aren't you glad and thankful today uh, uh, for the mercies of God? He says by the mercies of God. And, and, and Paul, uh, Paul asks that we acknowledge the mercies and then act upon the mercies of God. Yet yeah, David said, happy is the man uh, whose sins have been forgiven. Thank God uh, for all of the mercies that we receive receive every day. How many of you here today are glad and thankful uh, because of the mercies that God has given? Come on, somebody. I don't deserve, come on, I don't deserve the mercies. I can't work for these mercies, but it's out of his character, it's out of his goodness uh, that he gives us mercies. We got to recognize uh, that we are here by the mercy of God. Uh, now, some people take it for granted, uh, but it is by the mercies of God. God's mercy toward us is a result of his love and his willingness to uh, extend to us who stand in the need of help. Uh, he said, by the mercy of God, uh, we have been accepted in Christ. I don't know about you, uh, but I thank God that I'm accepted in the beloved. I, I thank God. I remember uh, I was a wretch undone. I remember how I used to walk. I know some of us have been saved so long uh, that we have forgotten we came out of darkness but and now walking in the, uh, the marvelous light. But I have not forgotten where God brought anybody else. Hey, you better remember. I didn't say go back to it but I thank God when I look back over my life and think it over I thank God I got a testimony uh, that I, I should have been dead come on somebody and yeah but I thank God that he kept me I was in some places uh, that other people got knocked off from I, I, I was doing some stuff that some other people didn't come out of but I'm glad this morning for the mercies of God hallelujah Titus uh, the third chapter and the fifth verse says, not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. You better quit trying to work your way to heaven. You better uh, quit trying to do good enough to be. You better understand is the mercies of God is Jesus Christ coming to this world to save us. By the mercy of God, we have been given ministries to perform. 
transform by the mercies of God we have become God's special people we have been adopted into the family of God I, I don't know about you Romans 8 and 15 says for we have not uh, received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father thank God we can look to our Father and say Abba we can say Daddy I thank you that even when I'm going through the midst of a challenge when when the enemy is on my trail and, and when I sometimes feel oppressed I can run to my daddy because I, I got the spirit of adoption and he loves me uh, just like he loves anybody else somebody ought to praise him right there hallelujah Jeremiah Jeremiah said it is of the Lord's mercies come on somebody it's the Lord's mercies uh, that we are not consumed Come on. There's some other people that have left here because of COVID-19. But it's because of his mercy, come on, that we have not been consumed. Come on, there's some other people that lost jobs and businesses. And, and if you still got yours, you better bless God and say it's because of your mercy and that I have not been con consumed. Thank God. There's some folk that have about lost their mind, but I thank God that he has given me um, a mind and he's made my mind right. And it's by his mercy that we have not been consumed because his compassions fail not. And they are new every morning. Somebody say, thank God for the new mercy. Don't you understand? Yesterday's mercy uh, was for yesterday, but I need new mercies. Every time I wake up, I need some new mercies of God. And our God is so faithful. Our God is so good. He gives us new mercies every day. And then great is thy faithfulness. His mercies woke us up this morning. His mercy gave us food this morning. His mercy allows us to have victory over the enemy. Come on, somebody. His mercy allows us uh, to walk uprightly in the things concerning him. And so I don't know about you, but I'll shout it to the mountain. To, I see you waving over there. Thank God for his mercy. If there's anybody around you, why don't you say you ought to bless God for his mercy. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. Uh, but he doesn't owe it to us, but I'm thankful for it. I appreciate. Glory to God. And so Paul suggests then that since we are so blessed by the mercy of God, then we ought to be willing to worship him, witness to him. And, and, and there is one object that God seeks and that is us. God desires. He created us for his glory. And so Paul then says, uh, then present yourselves as a living sacrifice. Paul is using worship terms when, uh, when he says present a sacrifice. For the Lord wants the sacrifice of our life and not our death. Now, understand that in the Old Testament, there were sacrifices, but they were dead animals. The sacrifice uh, is the physical element the worshiper brings to the Lord to express devotion, thanksgiving, or the need for forgiveness. Yeah, in the Old Testament, there, uh, there were burnt offerings and grain offerings and peace offerings and sin offerings and guilt offerings offerings but now in the new testament system jesus has made the ultimate sacrifice now we are all priests and we come to god for ourselves we are to present ourselves and this is an act of worship to god now when he suggests here to present uh, he's not talking about uh, a one-time action, but he's talking about presenting completely to God, not partially but whole. And yeah, yeah. And you know, we used to present ourselves to the devil. How many of y'all remember that? 
Yeah, we used to present ourselves to the devil and, and to Satan and to all of his activities. And, and, and Romans 6.13 says, don't present your members to the sin power, but to God as being alive. You can't give Satan your eyes. You can't give him your ears. You can't give him your mind. You got to be willing to give your whole self unto God. Too many people, uh, we want to give God a little bit of us and, and then save some of us for our good time and, and our party and things that, uh, that uh, we love in the flesh. But he said, no, when you make this presentation, it, it, it's got to be complete. It's got to be whole and entire. God is seeking, God is seeking sacrifices that are acceptable. Notice he said acceptable in the Old Testament. Yeah, the prophets told the people that uh, God was not pleased because of their sacrifices. They, uh, the sacrifices were weak and blind and lame, and, and God didn't accept it. He said, listen, if you take that to your governors, would they accept it? Why should I accept it? We ought to be willing to give God our best. It isn't that right? God is seeking sacrifices that are holy and that are acceptable. He, he doesn't want us to just give any old body. He, he wants a holy body, one that uh, is sanctified unto him. And so Paul understands and, and wants us to understand that uh, God wants their, uh, those who sacrifice themselves, uh, that if you're going to be holy and sanctified, then you've got to be transformed people, all right? People who have experienced personal renewal. And that's the only way to truly worship God with the presentation of ourselves. And that's the only way that the church uh, is going to be effective uh, is, is there must be a transformed people. He says, be not conformed to this world. And I'm mighty afraid this morning that too many Christians are patterning uh, themselves after the world system. And, and the world system uh, is evil and going down. But, uh, but we love the world system. And, and the Lord had me to come this morning to remind you that while we are not in the church building and while we are watching and viewing by streaming and we're not meeting like we used to, uh, be careful not to slip back into the world system. Can I get to a three? Be careful now that you don't begin to take things lightly that uh, just because we're not here checking on each other and, and just because we're not in our gathering place, uh, you got to still be holy and sanctified. It's easy now to lay there and watch TV and miss God. It's easy to get out of the routine and the practice of coming and worshiping. But uh, he said, you got to be careful. I need for you to continue uh, making a renewed presentation. As a matter of fact, God said, in these last six months that a whole lot of his people who used to walk closely with him ha have begun to turn away. They, they've gotten discouraged. They've gotten frustrated. They, they have looked at all of the things that are happening uh, and they've looked at the chaos in the world and they've allowed the chaos to discourage them. Uh, but I just came this morning to tell somebody, don't you be discouraged now. Don't you be dismayed. The same God, God is the same. He, nothing has changed about what God has said. I know we're going through COVID. I know we're going through all kind of isms in this culture. I know there's division. I know that we got rioting in the street and protests everywhere and we got all kinds of things trying to constrain us but I'm going to continue to bless his name. I'm going to continue to present myself a living sack. Come on somebody. There's nothing that has changed about God. And so Paul, Paul warns us not to live our lives governed by the thought patterns and the dictates of this evil world system. And, 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 the, and they are trying to bombard us with, uh, with all kind of demonic devices. And, and uh, you got to understand that uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Don't you be fooled. We as Christians must learn how to live. We got we to gotta learn how to live. Go over to Romans chapter number 8, if you will. 
because we got to recognize who we are. We got to remember, tell your neighbor, you better remember. Yeah, don't you let these times cause you to walk away and forget uh, who God is. And Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Somebody say free. Free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. Uh, he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh do what? Set their minds on the things of the flesh. Come on, where's your mind been in the last few months? Uh, when, we, when, when things changed and, and God kicked us out of the church, where has your mind gone? Come on, somebody. He said, for those who live according to the flesh, they set their mind on the things of the flesh. You can tell where people's minds are. You can tell where their hearts are by what they talk about, what they participate in. I can't get anybody. He says, but then those who live according to the spirit, they set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Can I get a witness right here? And because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be so. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Somebody else say amen. But then he says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, for now if anybody does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. I want you to get that word. Now, now so understand then that uh, we, we must not uh, learn uh, to walk according to the things of the world. We are different. You're different. You're not like everybody else. You uh, Quit trying to be like everybody else. Just quit trying to act like uh, everybody else. Listen, some of you got to get it in your spirit. You don't fit anymore. Huh? I said you don't fit anymore. Places you used to fit, you don't fit anymore. That's why when you show up, they feel awkward. You feel awkward. Your spirit is telling you, I, I really don't need to be here. I, don't, I really don't need to be doing this. This is my old life, but there's something that and we like to do. We like to be around some things sometimes. But listen, you got to get it in your mind. I just don't fit anymore, and I need to find some people of like spirit. Now, if you're going somewhere to witness, if you're going somewhere to share the things of God, then that's fine. But when you're going to partake, uh, then you don't fit. Paul says, Paul says, uh, then how can we present ourselves to God as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable and unconformed to the world? How can we do it when I got to deal with this flesh? And sometimes we say, listen, it, it, it's too hard. It just can't be done. But, uh, but he said, this is how you got to do it. You got to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It can't happen what you're thinking like you used to. All right? It's got to be a renewed mind. The mind is the center of logical reasoning and ethical judgment and moral awareness. And yeah, you got, you got to lose your old mind and, and begin to renew your mind in the word, in worship, in Bible study, and, and meditation in the word. When those old thoughts come back, you got to renew them with some good thoughts. When, when those old mindsets come back, you got to cast those things down. You got to take every thought in the cap and bring it into the obedience of Christ. I wish I had two or three. 
Hallelujah. The word then, the word, the word transformed is the key word. Yeah, if you're going to make uh, your renewed presentation, transform is a key word. We got to understand uh, what ought to take place uh, in the life of the one who offers himself uh, as a living sacrifice. When, when we are presenting ourselves, God checks us out to see if there has been a metamorphosis or a masquerade. I can't get anybody. A metamorphosis is, is when something is changed radically into another form and then the change comes from within. Do I have a witness? A masquerade suggests that changes have been made on the outside. And that's why when they talk about a masquerade ball, they put on masks, they put on costume because uh, you are not uh, who uh, you look like on the outside. It's just a costume, a masquerade. But a metamorphosis, when you think about a caterpillar, a caterpillar uh, goes through the power of God and changes into a butterfly. Yeah, from what occurred from the inside. Somebody say from the inside. Yeah, the miraculous move could only change it. And, and you got to understand that uh, you can't get, I don't care, uh, no matter how hard you try, I don't care how hard you pray, you cannot take a caterpillar and pin wings on it and call it a butterfly. Do I have a witness? No, it's just a caterpillar. And, and you got to recognize then um, that the same thing is true for us. That, um, that uh, uh, you, I don't care what you put on the outside. I don't care what robe you put on. I don't care what white clothes you put on. I don't care uh, what your Bible looks like and how you got a wonderful looking holy face. That if you have not had a radical change from the inside, uh, then you're going to be the same as you were. Yeah, you, you, can, you can take a sinner and sit him up in the church and uh, you can put anything you want to on him uh, and he'll still be a sinner, but it only comes when that something on the inside, come on, begins to work on the outside. That's what my grandma my grandmama understood it. She said, I got something. And we understand that something is the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost on the inside and is working on the outside and to let the world know that he's brought a great change in me. My God, you can take a man and sit him in a chicken coop and it'll never make him a chicken. And well, that's the same thing happens. You can bring a sinner to church and it'll never make him a Christian until there is transformation there. Uh, there must be a man metamorphosis that goes on uh, come on and yeah that's the only thing and that's why a whole lot of people still act like they act in church because uh, they got a masquerade going and not a metamorphosis can I get anybody yeah if you've had if you had a metamorphosis something ought to be different about you it, come on, if you if you still acting like you did 20 years ago when you got saved then you must be still masquerading A metamorphosis is what God is seeking in us and not a masquerade. Every one of us, uh, yeah, as we come together, uh, has either become a transformer or a conformer. It's a masquerade or a metamorphosis. We are either living our lives by the pressures from the outside or we are transformed by the power from within. And so Paul says, be not conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. We can make a renewed presentation today, and that means that the followers of Christ ought to become something very different from what they had been. Yeah, we have a new covenant. We have a new nature. Yeah, we need uh, uh, to, to become new creatures, uh, all so that we can live in the newness of life so that we prepare to dwell in the new heavens and sing a new song when there has been this transformation whenever we have made a renewed presentation it'll affect your whole life it'll affect your desires it'll affect your companionship it'll affect your behavior because as an act of worship you have been transformed 
by living near to God. And the closer you live to God, the more you become like him. Isn't that right? Yeah, we become like that God that we worship. What we are and what we are and what we become is determined by what we worship. And so God is looking for uh, transformed sacrifices. Those who have been born again. Those who've been washed in the blood of the lamb. Those who can declare with the old songwriter, have thine own way. I am thine, O Lord. I, I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn. Anybody want to be closer today? I mean, come on. All the hell we've been through, all the stuff we've been dealing with, that ought to cause somebody to desire to be closer under God. That's why the songwriter said, draw me nearer, uh, nearer, blessed Lord, uh, to the cross where thy uh, have died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, uh, to thy precious bleeding side. And, and then he picked it up again. He said, consecrate me now. Is there anybody want to be consecrated? I mean, is there anybody that desires to be clean? I, I want to be clean. Consecrate me. Separate me uh, yeah uh, uh, cause this to be something different uh, he says consecrate me now to thy service lord by the power of grace divine let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine and then he said draw me nearer somebody ought to say draw me nearer I feel my feet sleeping, draw, draw me nearer. I, I feel myself slipping, uh, draw me nearer. I, I feel like my heart is getting cold, draw me nearer. Come on, somebody. I feel like what I've been through is, is having a great impact on me, draw me nearer. I, I feel that I, I can feel the old songs coming back to me. I, I feel the old way of living coming back to me. I need you to draw me nearer and uh, nearer, precious Lord. And I don't know about you, but we worship. Worship God by presenting a holy body, yeah, a holy life, one that he accepts because it has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Anybody been washed this morning? Yeah, when you've been washed, yes, when you've been washed in the blood, you will uh, begin to experience a personal renewal. Yeah, you begin uh, to look new and, and you begin to act new and, and things will begin to happen in your life. So this morning, don't allow the pandemic to make you stop presenting yourself as a living sacrifice. Don't allow your commitment to kingdom slip away. Don't allow yourself to falter in your dedication, but just declare that I urge you by the mercies of God. And what are the greatest mercies of God? The greatest mercy of God, and yes, that makes it possible for us to make a renewed presentation is the miracle, yes, and the wonder that happened at Calvary. Y'all remember Calvary, don't you? Yeah, it was where God and Satan met and for a final countdown. It was at Calvary where Satan was defeated after they had whipped Jesus all night long. After they marched him up Golgotha's hill with a cross on his shoulder. And when they got him to Golgotha's hill, the Bible said they hung him high and stretched him wide. But he never said a mumbling word. Can I get a witness here? Don't you remember the story and that how he was hanging suspended in the noonday sun? And the Bible says that, and that about the ninth hour, he dropped his head and he died. And I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so glad that he died. I'm so glad that it was at Calvary that he died for my sins and not for his. It was at Calvary where Satan was defeated. It was at Calvary where his devilish schemes were foiled. It was at Calvary where his mighty powers were conquered. It was at Calvary where his subtle methods were exposed. It was at Calvary where his foolish pride
pride was cast down. Somebody say, thank God for Calvary. I thank God this morning uh, that even though he hung his head uh, and the Bible said he died, uh, they put him in a borrowed tomb. Uh, but aren't you glad this morning uh, that he laid there Friday night? Uh, and he laid there Saturday night but God bless your soul you ought to praise him this morning that it was early Sunday morning that he got up uh, out of the grave uh, and had all power, uh, all power in his hand. Uh, he said, I can destroy, uh, but I will defend. I'm so glad and that he got up out of the grave uh, and the same power that raised him up uh, is the same power that's working in me. Uh, and so I don't know about you this morning. Uh, I'm not going to let the trouble stop me. Uh, I'm not going to let these things depress me. Uh, I'm not going to let COVID-19 steal my joy I still have joy anybody still have joy out of all I've been through I still got joy I can look in the face of racism I can look in the face of oppression and still bless his name because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world somebody say yes I'm gonna present myself a living sacrifice holy unto God which is my reasonable service and I want the world to know that he can use me if you can use anybody you can use me I know I was a wretch undone but aren't you glad this morning that he reached way down and picked you up out of the miry clay wash you off and put your feet to running he gave you something to do he has given you an assignment he has given you a purpose and so don't let anybody steal your purpose say yes give God praise say God here I am I'm being transformed I'm renewing my mind I'm thinking not like I used to but I got new revelation thoughts I got new purpose in the mind I got a new determination in my spirit do I have anybody here today hallelujah come on give God praise Give God praise. Give God praise. He said, he says, he says, you got to make a renewed presentation. Because I see you. And I see you right now. Some of us have just gotten back to the place of formality. Some of us have, have become coal. Our fire. The, the anointing, the glory has been leaking because of the troubles and, and because of the news and because of the things that we see. And God said, I, I want you to remind my people that they got to make this renewed presentation to me. That, that you, can't, you can't just be like the Bible says in the latter days that people will have a form of godliness but deny the power therein. And God says, I see you. Some of you are, you, you got the form, but you're, you're leaking, you're slipping. And God said, I created you for my glory. I created you for my purpose. I created you for me. And some of you have allowed what you've been through to dictate who God is in your life. How many of you know none of that changed? Everything God purposed for you, everything God said about you before the pandemic is still good. Every promise, come on somebody, every promise, every vision, every revelation that he said before is still good. It didn't catch God. It didn't catch God by surprise. None of this has caught God by surprise. None of this has caught God by surprise. None of this. God sees it. And God says, I need you, I need you to make a renewed presentation. I need you to just say, God, here am I. You can use me. I felt myself slipping. I felt myself waning in my devotion. I felt myself 
letting go of who I was, who I, how I used to worship, how I used to serve, just because I don't go in the building. Some of us have identified our own action with the building. God said, I need, I need you to make a renewed presentation. I need you to, I need you. And as a matter of fact, if you want to make a renewed presentation and you want to come to this altar today, come on today. Come on this morning. Come on this morning. Let's make a renewed presentation to God. You know where you've been, your prayer life, your study life. You know what it has become. today and say God here I am you can use me if that's you come on if you got some stuff you need to lay at the altar that's been distracting you some stuff that's been blocking you you need to be transformed again will you come will you come I see you coming come on Come on, come up from this side. Come on, if you know, I, I need to make a renewed presentation. Come on. I'm tired of going through formality. I've let stuff block me and my walk with God. testimony today that wherever you want me to go whatever come on come on that's right I see you coming it's a little further walk than walking down the aisle but come on God God wants you I put something in you I've got greatness inside of you That's right, come on, come on. He's waiting on you. He knows the assignment over your life. He knows the purpose he put in you. Will you come? Come on, come on. We're making that renewed presentation. If you want to make that renewed presentation, if you determine today I'm going to do His will, no matter what I encounter, no matter what challenge hit my life, Oh, 
come and say, God, I want to do your will this morning. I'm tired of doing what my life has dictated. I want to surrender and be a witness to you, God, as I give myself to you. How many of y'all really want to be used by the Lord? I said, how many of you really want to be used by the Lord? That means you have to totally submit yourself to him. Wherever he tells you to go, you have to go. Whatever he tells you to say, you have to say. I don't know about you, but there's no other way than to be used by the Lord. I don't want to be in my flesh. I don't want to be in my carnality. But I want the Lord to use me by his spirit. Do I have a witness tonight? Come on, come on, clap your hands if you want to be used by the Lord. Come on, let's give God praise. I'm going to do his will. I'm going to do his will. Listen, listen, you have come to this altar today. And I praise God out of the conviction that first of all, we can't do too much for God. There are naysayers and people who will try to tell you you're doing too much for God. But listen, when you give your whole self to him, when you make a true presentation of yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, don't allow people to discourage you, to call you away from your purpose, to call you away from who God has assigned you to be and what God has assigned you to do if anything we ought to be running harder after God because we look at these turbulent times and we look at how people are, are, are going to hell on their way and we have become comfortable as the church I told you God kicked us out for a reason and there have been a whole lot of people who've been wanting to get back in and get back in because their identity is in the church house. We come to worship and then we depart, we break to go be who God has called us to be. And the Spirit says that some of us, have, we've gotten to that form. You're going through the motion. But as you rededicate, as you renew the presentation, you know every, every year you got to renew subscriptions and you got you to gotta renew you know, contracts and things like that. And the Lord said, I need you to renew with me. And I bless God for those of you who have come. And I say to you who are viewing by way of streaming, that if you've gotten to that place and streaming has made you lazy and inattentive, you'll turn it on, but you're not really viewing, you're, you're doing other things. And, and then when it's off, you're off to your next movie, you're off to your next sitcom. You're off to your next thing. And those who become discouraged along this way and frustrated and aggravated, this is your good time now to say, God, with everything in me, I'm going to do your will. Sometimes it's harder than other times. Sometimes there are greater challenges than other times, but I'm going to do your will. And I'm going to do it wholly, completely. And I'm giving my whole self if you're listening right now and you want to make a connection with God, you've never been born again, you have never accepted Christ as personal Savior, you can do that right now. The, the word is for you that you present yourself. Say, God, here I am. I've tried to live my own life. I've tried to do it my own way. But I recognize that without you, I'm lost, helpless, and condemned. 
I want to spend eternity in your presence. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. Despite what people say, I believe Jesus Christ is your son, and I want him to live in me. If that's you, you can be born again right now. Put your name on that chat line, and we have counselors who will pick it up. If you're looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere, you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Or you can just visit us online at www.friendshipgastonia.com. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember...